Hi guys, uh, welcome to a bit of an adventure. Hi. Hey. Uh, we're attempting to cross the mountains from Italy to France um, just to raise a bit of awareness. So follow us on hashtag finding the refuge. Um, we have some lovely, already slightly warm, <laughs> slightly out of breath people. Uh, we are walking from Italy to France in search of safety and a refuge. We of course uh, are safe here in these countries, but there's many people who come these ways that aren't. Um, so we're walking it just to illustrate some of the uh, challenges, some of the stories uh, and specifically to raise some money and raise some awareness. Uh, so Lily is a young woman that arrived just a few days ago. Uh, she's nine months pregnant and um, has never seen a doctor before. So uh, it's been quite challenging for her. Uh, she is getting some tests and everything to uh, see if the baby is healthy. Uh, but anyways, the the main thing is that she has no family here, uh, no money as well, and uh, is in a bit of a difficult situation. So we're trying to raise a bit of funds for her, uh, just so that she can get the basic equipment and uh, be treated the right way and that the baby is healthy also. Um, I just wanted to highlight a few things. Um, it is a bit hard for us, I mean, climbing and stuff, but really, um, compared to other people, it's quite easy for us. We are legally allowed to be here. We know roughly where we're going to. We don't have any GPS or anything, but we, we more or less know where we're going. Um, we also have a nice bed waiting for us at the end. Uh, so that's quite easy for us as well. We have health insurance. If ever something happens, uh, somebody can pick us up here if ever. So yeah, in the end, it's quite uh, easy for us. Um, so right now, as you can see, we're up that hill and maybe you can see How is it, over here. How is it safe over that way, Eleanor? We've just decided to cut onto uh, a bit of a piste and it's just a real reminder how wonderful um, it is to be in places like this. It's such a privilege. Um, and uh, in the winter, obviously, covered in metres of snow. Uh, and for us, if anything, it just drives home the contrast. Somewhere beautiful, somewhere relaxing, somewhere that people enjoy uh, holidays. Uh, also has problems. There is challenges, there's poverty uh, everywhere in the world. But somewhere like this, is, the contrast is maybe uh, greater. Um, and just with people and misplaced people, there's never been so many misplaced people in the history of the world, not in the wars, not in any of the great shifts of power or countries or wars. And that statistic is terrifying and overwhelming. Um, I just hope that we as people end up sitting on the right side of history. So we've just crossed the border, we're now in France, but there's literally no difference in the terrain. Like if you didn't know where you were, you wouldn't have any idea. How are you um, finding it so far Alex? It's very difficult, I can't even imagine how to begin how horrible, hard it must be in the winter with all the snow. Yeah, um, you've been out here in the winter haven't you? Yeah, so this winter especially it was very harsh. Um, meters and meters of snow. And uh, you've also been down to some of the safe places where uh, people can find refuge before. How, how did you find that? It was, was very, very eye-opening. Like the living conditions are, they're not great at all. Um, sometimes there can be up to 30 people in one room, maybe. So all sleeping together. Yeah, uh, it's really hard. Yeah, um, it's just a def very difficult journey. Um, are you feeling, are you tired? Are yeah. you okay? <laughs> We've not even been going for very long. There's still a very long way to go, but we're already feeling very tired, um, very sweaty. <laughs> I start the uh, live feed and then I slip, keeping it cool. <laughs> Don't fall over guys, you're on candid camera. <laughs> so over the course of the winter, uh, estimates are around 3,000 people have uh, crossed here. If you don't cross down Turkey and Greece, 
you often come to Italy. Unfortunately, Italy is one of the least hospitable places at the moment to not have a residency or be a national there. Um, so there's very few support and med medical supplies in refugee camps and things. Um, so a lot of people keep moving. There are some that are just economic migrants that are fairly organized, fairly well to do and have a smartphone. There are so many who come from war zones, come from North Africa, they come from uh, Afghanistan, come from Iraq, come from Syria, and they also come from um, places like Congo, Sierra Leone, Libya. Uh, not a single one of those places is easy to sort out by sending a check to them or sending in a quick peacemaker squad to sort it out. These are places that have been difficult for generations. The people who turn up have uh, the clothes on their back. They often have just hoodies and trainers, partly why we've tried to authentically go with a similar setup. And they do their best uh, to make it just to keep moving. Um, the whole situation with uh, migration in the world is complicated. Politically, it's polarizing. Um, there's headlines on right wing and left wing and there's so much to talk about, but all we know is that people are turning up here and they need our help. So if anyone would like to talk about the politics, I'd be really happy to. Uh, it's obviously a subject that's important to me, but we don't really need to get into it. All we need to tell you is that people have been dying on these routes. Um, people are desperate, they need food, they need clothes. Um, and in the case of Lily and her baby, she needs to have a baby safely. Um, it's a lot simpler than the, the global geopolitical situation. Um, so hopefully you guys can get behind that. Um, how's it going? Is it getting harder? It's quite complicated. Well, now we're going down a little <laughs> bit, so it's a bit harder. <laughs> Mad. Okay, well, we'll come back to you when maybe it's a bit safer. Yeah. Um, but uh, wish us luck. Like I said earlier, we made the decision not to wear good, proper hiking shoes. I think uh, some of us may not have them anyway. <laughs> uh, but in reality, it's making some of this really quite challenging. We still have light, which is great. Still looks beautiful. None of us are native born here. We have a troop of city boys and girls, really. <laughs> Parisians, Londoners, and where are you from again, Alex? Reading. Reading, the epic metropolis that is Reading. Um, it's actually technically the largest town in England. Just, just a little lovely little fact there for you all on uh, Facebook Live. And another fact for you all is Paris, more annual rainfall than London. No way. Yeah. No Frenchman has ever, or woman has ever believed me of that statistic, but Google it right now, I promise you. <laughs> okay. Um, very briefly, the uh, video slightly went off there. I don't know why, probably something to do with me falling down. Hashtag first fall, don't follow that one. Um, Oh, didn't mean to press that. Oh, there you go. Nice Parisian theme for you, for my uh, crash. Um, don't know what happened there. Uh, all right, finding the refuge, follow the journey. Hey guys, we're here again on our way to uh, finding the refuge. So um, just to let you know, this is one step uh, of getting to France. Um, the journey is actually a lot longer. It can take up to two or three years, sometimes more than that. Um, and as you probably know, uh, the, the hardest um, stop on the journey is Libya, um, where there's a lot of torturing going on, a lot of kidnapping, uh, more modern day slavery as well. Uh, so this is just a small part of the journey. Um, and it's, it's crazy to think that people have to go through all of this 
just to get to a safe place. We've had a few hair raising moments, a few uh, slightly steep sort of descents. Occasionally we're coming onto paths, but we're, we're trying as best as possible to stay um, as hidden as possible. Um, we just wanted to, on this post, just say a huge thank you. Uh, we've already seen a number of uh, donations coming in. Um, it's going to make a real difference uh, to Lily um, and her baby. It's worth mentioning so far already, we've now been able to get a cot, a pram, a uh, buggy system, uh, a load of clothes. Do you remember what else we've been able to get so far, Lena? Do you remember the list? <laughs> no, no, not right yeah. now, my brain is... <laughs> <laughs> It's worth adding that all of us have had really busy weeks, really busy days, and we decided to do this right at the end of one of those really busy days. So that might not be the smartest thing, but in reality, most people having to make this journey are having to cross uh, either very late at night um, or in bad weather. Um, so realistically, we still have it easy. And like uh, Alan has said before, this is only one part of a very, very long journey most people have been on. Uh, we're only doing a few miles, really. GoFundMe.com slash help dash in dash the dash Alps. And those dashes are uh, hyphens. Please, um, please share it. Um, we really appreciate every single pound or euro really goes straight to uh, this person in need. Um, we'd love to tell you more about her story, but it's not our story to tell. Uh, and it's not fair, you just need to know that um, it's heart-wrenching um, and she's desperately in need. Um, but anyway, thank you guys, keep supporting, keep um, following us. The journey is getting hard, the sweat is getting real. Look, I think that was probably the first blood, I don't know. Doesn't really count, any blood? No. No, not yet. No. Amazingly. <laughs> uh, but uh, we'll keep you posted. So hashtag finding the refuge, yeah. hashtag Lily's baby. And thank you uh, so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We do appreciate it, we really do. We're deep in the jungle. <laughs> Just fell over again as soon as I start a, uh, a video. Only joking. Right, we're, uh, we're getting there. We've um, had to take some paths that the paths less trodden shall we say i think as the legs get tired it's easier to slip and make uh mistakes but we're still getting there we're still pressing on thank you so much everyone who's donated we're very happily getting on our way for our target which is really really great thank you um, but please spread the word, please donate, even just five euros goes a long way. We do appreciate that we are fairly well off, we're fairly privileged, and we have not come from war-torn countries. <sighs> this is just what we've gone through, there's no path at all, quite intense. But we're doing it because other people are. So, yeah. yeah, thank you for your support. But genuinely finding this a challenge. When you hike, but you keep away from the paths and you keep away from people noticing you, it's, uh, it's very beautiful, it's very serene, um, but it's really hard work. Uh, a little bit dangerous, not too bad, but uh, Really exhausting, really disorientating. All the time we're finding ourselves dropping into a coal uh, or into a bit of a valley and getting disorientated. We're traversing a fairly s steep bit. Got a very big fence here. Uh, it's not actually a border fence. It's not designed to stop humans. It's designed to stop rocks and uh, snow in the winter with avalanches. So it's for safety. Um, it's worth adding and noting that we have no idea the routes that people have been taking. We know anecdotally some of the people have taken, they leave at night 
and it would take 14 hours to cross a journey that would take 10 minutes in the car or 20 minutes I should say or maybe if you were walking along the main paths or the roads it would take you um, would take you maybe two hours we've already taken two hours to effectively walk um, what would normally take 20 minutes so we're starting to feel the scale of the challenge starting to understand uh, the frustration of working really hard at barely getting anywhere and uh, how are we finding it people are we still alive yeah. just yeah. about I hope that was for dramatic effect, Jan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling? It's been exhausting. It's crazy. We've done, I don't know, half an hour, something like that, hors piste. We basically need to go straight down. Yeah. We see our destination for the first time. The sunset is stunning. Does anyone know where we're going now? Um, no. Okay. We're trying to make this as authentic as possible so we're not using GPS, we're not using maps. Um, and we're uh, completely on purpose being really bad at navigating. <laughs> it's completely intentional. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for watching and supporting. We're just doing this to raise a bit of awareness for uh, the journey that so many are making. Um, that are coming into Europe with no money, no rights, no home, no support. And uh, these people are turning up and they need clothes, they need food, they need somewhere safe to be. And uh, I think it's the least we can do. There's a much bigger issue afoot. There's a lot of things going on in the world that need sorting, but right here, right now, there's people who need looking after and a lot are taking these routes. Coming from Italy, uh, coming over into France and by now they would have heard that there's maybe somewhere safe down there but also that there's lots of officials police and people who aren't necessarily on their side um, so the fear would still be real we'll um we'll keep you posted a thunderstorm would be definitely another element it's worth noting that some people do cross during bad weather because people trying to capture them and stop them struggle in that weather. Um, as hard as this has been for us to do it in the middle of a storm seems a bit, uh, a bit incredible really. So uh, thank you for watching and uh, keep following the journey. We're still going, the light is fading fast. The disorientation is growing. We uh, could see our destination, but then to get to it, we've had to double back on ourselves off from a, a cliff uh, just to find a safe route down. And uh, yeah, I think uh, increasingly just the perils of this type of journey, especially at night, uh, especially with not knowing where you're going, just become very real. Our journey's not over. We'll keep posting. We'll keep you uh, updated. And uh, at the very least, we'll hopefully keep tracking ourselves so we know that we make it down okay. <laughs> um, I don't know if you can see anyone else. Our eyes are probably better adjusted than the camera, but it's still getting very dark. Um, it's beautiful. It's starting to get a little bit scary, wouldn't you say, guys? <laughs> and coming to Europe is, is not necessarily a perfect place to come to, and there's not necessarily open arms when you get here. Um, but the journey itself is certainly perilous. And we are getting a tiny little taste of what it's like. And like we said earlier, we have reasonable knowledge of the area. We have hospitals and health insurance and helicopters. And if we see a government official or policeman, we don't need to run from them. We... It's, uh, it's getting pretty dark. Um, we are very aware that most people making this journey would not use torches. Um, certainly not to draw attention to themselves. Um, but we're trying not to injure ourselves for all the responsibilities and things we have. He says as he has one 
hand with the camera and one hand with the phone. <laughs> and we're getting quite close to a, a road, so we're having to stay hidden. We're using torches, um, but we're still going. Uh, hashtag finding the refuge. We're looking for uh, this safe place. Uh, many people do this journey. Many people uh, spend all night coming through the mountains and just doing it from this evening. I think we can see why. It's very easy to get lost, very easy to get disorientated, very easy to double back on yourself when you don't mean to. It's quite interesting just to be on the road now. And I was just wondering if I was in the situation that a lot of people are in when they cross the border. Would I take the chance to um, to stay on the road or would I go to the, well, go back into the forest and uh, eventually maybe just get even more lost than I would be. Um, it's quite difficult even now because you can barely see the, where we want to go to. Um, and honestly, uh, after doing so many turns and going down a steep side of the, side of the mountain, it's quite dis... So, dis so, nah, can't say it. Dis uh, ben, say it, please. <laughs> it's incredibly disorientating. Yeah, there we go. On point so, uh, can't do it. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's a little bit hard. Yeah, um, it's been a long evening. Yeah, that. long evening. But we're almost there, I believe. Hope. I reckon at least one more hour. <laughs> yeah, Ben says one more hour till we get right. to our place. Cars are coming all the time. So yeah, it's quite quite a challenge, and uh, it's it's crazy to think that we can do it without having any trouble. And some people just do it scared to death and uh, lost, uh, going on for hours with no water, no food. Um, yeah, it's a long journey, definitely. Um, we've just come along and found uh, some evidence of people on the route. Um, Throughout the winter, people were leaving clothes and supplies for people. In the summer, there's a lot of bags and things that are used to either supply or sometimes they get left when people are walking over. Um, we're going to take this with us. Um, but it just shows you that uh, this route is uh, well used. Um, we didn't know, or we don't know, if we're going the route that people take. We're just taking a route that we would take. We've got lost a little bit. We've double backed on ourselves a couple of times. Um, were we ever truly lost? I don't know. Uh, Not really. No. We were okay. I think we're getting tired. Our decision making ability has gone out. I think either way, we're going down. Yeah. yeah. So. Isn't love a shit? We're nearly getting there. We've um, we started about 6 p.m. local French time. It's nearly getting to 11, so definitely feeling fatigued. We've had a bit of water and um, snacks on the way, but legs are tired, sprained my ankle, knees giving in a bit. Um, but we're very nearly there, well, at least for our destination. And one of the reasons we're not going straight all the way down into uh, the refuge itself is uh, just to keep it secure and safe for um, some fairly obvious reasons. Um, overall, it's not our story to tell this, although it's local to us. Really, the story belongs to the hundreds, the thousands of people who make these journeys and similar ones uh, all the time, every year. Uh, but in reality, we cannot document, we cannot show you their stories. Um, because it, it doesn't help them, it doesn't help them naturalise and have a chance at a, a life or at least to start somewhere safe. It's been uh, at times beautiful and fun but in reality just really hard work. Uh, my legs feel absolutely shot. Realistically if we had just stayed to the open paths we could have done the whole thing in an hour or two. 
but it's just taken us, um, yeah, a fair old time, five odd hours, and uh, yeah, very, very hard to uh, keep, um, keep a sense of where you are and where you're going. And, you know, I live here. People who've come through this way will never have, not only not know the route, but they won't have even, um, they won't even recognise the landscape, may not even recognise the type of um, terrain, even the trees and things. So for them, much, much harder for sure. I'm sure many will be fitter than me. That's not difficult. Um, but in reality, a much, much harder scenario. And there's a couple of times we dipped onto a path or a road. Um, for some of these people, that might not be a good idea or uh, many would avoid it. We did it. Yes. We did it. Yeah. How are you guys feeling? Uh, a bit tired. I'm just thinking it's only part of the way that they have to do. And we're exhausted. It's 11 o'clock at night. Want to go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely bedtime. <laughs> How are you, Alex? Yeah, it's good. <laughs> a little bit tired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, legs. Legs. Dead. Well, from all of us, thank you so much for following us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. We found our refuge, but in reality, the uh, main refuge people go to, we won't show you for. Uh, security reasons um, but also it's another two hours on mm. at least at least <laughs> and uh, and I would keep going of course but the rest of them are just of there's course. no determination yeah, so uh, uh, just to respect them uh, I think we might stop here but um, thank you so much you genuinely so much thank you for uh, donations for sharing for liking for um, yeah, just following us on our journey. Yeah, it's really eye-opening for us. Uh, we only got to taste a really little bit of what people do. Um, so we cannot understand, really. But just to have a taste of it is uh, sobering, to say the least. Um, it really makes you think about what people are having to deal with. Uh, and this isn't just one day for them. Some of these journeys, some people have been on the road for, for years and years and years. Um, so do what you can to look after people who are misplaced. Uh, do what you can to uh, help them uh, either have a better chance of life or help them on the way, whatever they need. Um, but yeah, thank you. And uh, and we'll we'll keep you updated with things about Lily and the baby. And then we'll, we'll let you know what's happening next for, for a lot of the other uh, migrants, refugees, people who need our help. So have a great evening. We're going to go to bed soon. Our own lovely warm beds. Um, and uh, but yeah, not everyone has that luxury. So thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.